Hi guys, today I am batching out castle joints for some legs that I'm making for a bed frame and I thought that I would take you along to show you how I did it. So for my situation, the bed I'm making, I'm using four quarter oak, red oak, um, for the rails and then for the legs I've got some 4x4 four four material which is just you know pressed three quarters um, It's about 13 inches tall. This is going to get a taper on it eventually But today I just wanted to make sure that I had the cuts here done perfectly And I made a template which I then will transfer on to all the rails once they are cut so it's a fun process and I've got some footage to walk you through it. It looks, it looks more complicated, right? Doesn't this look kind of pretty? I, I see things on Pinterest like the most beautiful Japanese joinery doesn't require any fasteners, super strong. And I get intrigued by that kind of stuff. Um, so this is the first time, first chance that I've had to try it out for myself on something practical. And it really is uh, quite a sturdy joint. You may have noticed near the end there that uh, the overhang that I had initially snapped off. So this is just kind of a prototype template. I think in the final ones I'll maybe bump this out just another eighth of an inch. Um, I don't think it looks too obtrusive. To tell you the truth, from a design perspective, I would rather have this sticking out a little bit 
uh, on the top and on the ends as opposed to being flush because it helps hide some of the air, right? As I uh, chamfer the edges here and things, any kind of uh, wobbly cuts, they kind of get hidden in the shadow of the overhang and it provides an interesting contrast. I think it'll look really pretty when the stain and the finish is on it as well. So just a little design element I figured I'd talk about. Uh, if I had a bandsaw, obviously I would have probably gone all the way down. This is four inches wide for my rails. I can't get four inches deep, which is why I had to make this cutout on the bottom. So let me take this off. <clears throat> That's why I had to make this cutout here. Because um, the best I could do was with my table saw. Ideally, if you had a bandsaw or you were really good cutting flat with a coping saw or something like that, you could just go all four inches, you know, do that extra half an inch, and then the whole thing would rest in there. As it stands, I don't think it's going to make any difference for the structural integrity. This is an easy notch to cut out, but I do want to have that little notch on the outer edge because eventually, when I put this on here, you know, the chamfer is going to start at four inches, or the taper, rather, and it's going to be tapered, you know, like this, just ever so slightly. And I want that to start at the four inch mark. And it, I think it's going to look strange if I have this cutting off at three and a half inches and then the chamfer starts at four, or the taper starts at four. I'm just rambling now. But anyways, it was pretty straightforward and I liked it. And I think I'm going to enjoy looking at this end piece, this leg on a bed frame for many, many years. What do you think? Um, there will be a final video where you can see the whole bed being built. If that's done at the time this video is up, I'm sure I'll have it linked. You can check it out, see how it turned out, and let me know how your project's going. Thanks for watching! Check out the other stuff in my bedroom renovation playlist. Take care and subscribe!